What's up everybody, me Kevin here. Today I want to talk to you a little bit about passive income from real estate, but from the point of view that most people won't initially think of. See, oftentimes we hear the phrase, why is it that the rich keep getting richer? Well, I think I may have found one of the reasons. One of the reasons is the rich tend to look at investing in ways that most of us don't. See, most of the time we're regularly thinking about, okay, well, you know, if I'm gonna invest in real estate, it just needs to create some cash flow because that's what we're brainwashed to hear. Which, look, I mean, this is not a video saying cash flow is bad. Cash flow is very good, cash flow is very important. Everything in this video has cash flow as a baseline. But what I wanna focus on in this video is what goes beyond cash flow. So let's talk about that. That is, what are four ways that you can make money not considering cash flow? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take 12 properties from my portfolio, all single family houses, and I'm gonna use those and assume that there is no cash flow. There is cash flow. But let's not even consider the cash flow. Just so we can see how can you actually make money with single family houses not considering cash flow. And there are four main ways that you can do that. I'm gonna not only break down those four main methods, but I'm gonna show you exactly what my numbers are on those single family houses. So again, this is not considering cash flow, this is not considering multifamily real estate, solely money that you could make passively while being on a Disney cruise, hanging out with my kids and Mickey Mouse and getting paid to do that. So first things first, my favorite day of the month is what's generally most people's worst day of the month, the first of the month. The reason for that is pretty simple. Every tenant, for me at least, is required to pay rent on the first and they're late if they don't pay by the first. In fact, they get a discount on their rent if they pay early, especially if they pay through auto pay, which is really convenient for me because then I don't even have to deposit checks because I'm kind of lazy in that way. <laughs> I don't even want to sit there photo depositing checks. But there's something really special and cool that comes out of that. On every single one of these properties, there is a mortgage, which I know some people might hear that and think, Kevin, are you serious? You're massively in debt. I'll just be transparent up front. My total debt ratio is never any more than 65% debt, which leaves 35% in actual equity. Although lately I've been a lot closer to 50% equity because values have gone up and I don't like to speculate on market values. So I don't always like to refinance and take cash out. I leave a lot of extra money in these properties just to insulate in case values go down. You know, I still wanna be in a safe position. I don't wanna go bankrupt because of too much debt. So in real estate, do not take out too much debt. That might be different if you're starting out, obviously. If you're buying your first place, you're gonna have more debt. All right, so first things first, we've got 12 single family houses in this scenario. I'm gonna put up on screen here the principal pay down for every single one of these properties. It looks like we've got a low here of $584 of monthly principal pay down and a high of $882. Principal pay down is the amount of money that the tenants are paying off the debt on these properties for me every single month, which means that the first of every single month, the tenants are basically paying off a total of $7,724 with me doing absolutely nothing. That is, I literally get rent auto paid to me and the mortgage gets paid automatically. Now I profit a difference in cash flow, but this video isn't about cash flow, remember. This is solely what my debt gets paid down off every single month. And that total is $7,724, which if you multiply that by 12, my net worth goes up by this amount doing nothing, which if I divide that by day, that's $257 per day of passive income, passive wealth building basically. And just so you know the difference between passive income and passive wealth building is passive income is money you have to pay taxes on. Passive wealth building is your net worth goes up by $257 a day and I don't have to pay taxes on it, which is even better than passive income. But anyway, $257 a day doing nothing. So this floated over to me, truly hard seltzer. I kind of took it out of the pool because I thought it was weird that it was floating around. I could buy a lot of those every single day doing nothing and just sitting here in the sun chilling. Which honestly, I have to say, like this seems really basic. I just talked about principal pay down. Like 
big deal. Yet principal pay down creates almost twice the average monthly income that most people make in the United States just from controlling these properties. And know that I didn't come from a wealthy background either. I came from a background of being nine years old and going through the foreclosure process, having no money, and my family divorced. And then guess what happens right after my father gets back on his feet after the 2002 hiccup, 2008 recession. So, didn't really come for money. In other words, if today your net worth is zero or slightly negative or slightly positive, know that you can make this happen too. So these properties are cash flow positive and my principal pay down happens automatically. But what do I get beyond the fact that on one hand I'm taking money in, on the other hand I'm paying the mortgage, I get this other special thing. I get an interest write-off. So here's how that works. Every single month when I pay interest on these loans, I pay about 4.5% interest on average. Some properties are like 3.5, some are 3.99, some are like 4.75 that I should probably refinance, but I don't. I'm not a big fan of refinancing. I talk about that in the investing course all of the time. All my reasons and tricks and strategies for knowing when to refinance and that. By the way, my birthday is the day I'm posting this video. So use a special coupon code down below just as a special thank you for watching this video. It's more than any coupon I've ever done before. But anyway, I get to write off the interest on these properties, which is just one of the many things that I could write off in real estate. So what that means is if I'm paying, let's say four and a half percent in interest, I'm saving about 50% of all of the money I'm spending on interest that the tenants are paying for me. Quick example as to how that works. If I pay $2,000 in interest, I, on the other hand, save $1,000 in taxes because I own rental property. But for all of these 12 properties, I'm left with a net taxable benefit every single month of $3,345 per month. That means every single month doing nothing, I get a tax savings of $3,300. That's about $100 per day doing nothing that the government is giving me because I own real estate. They incentivize landlords to own real estate. Now in total, that adds up to $40,000 of annual tax benefits. There are some limitations on that number if you're not a real estate professional, which means you're like an agent or your broker or your dealer, but you should always talk to your CPA about those things. So, so far we've got annual benefits of $92,692 plus the tax benefits of $40,146 doing nothing and we still haven't even considered cash flow. My third main way to make money from real estate, not even considering cash flow, is buying deals below market value. And I know, this is where I get comments all the time on the YouTube channel where people are like, well, wait a minute, Kevin, if you paid $400,000 for a property, that's the market value of the property. How did you get it below market value? And this is like the classic line that comes from somebody who just basically passed a regular economics class, like a, a macroeconomics 101. <laughs> Basically where you learn that the market is efficient. There's this thing called the efficient market hypothesis that, oh yeah, the market's always efficient. Let me just be clear. That might be true in stocks, but it's definitely not true in real estate. See, in real estate, there's a saying that all real estate is local. And because all real estate is local, your competition is really small. When your competition is small, you get what are called inefficiencies in the market. So basically, I'm able to buy a place for $400,000 that's worth five fifty or six hundred thousand dollars with a little bit of paint and carpet work because a a lot of people are uneducated b the competition pool is really small because only like 11 percent of people competing against me are investors and then i'm usually only competing against people in my local area so if there are flippers in your area you can take advantage of what i'm talking about and getting these below market value deals and i'm now able to capture all of this extra money that people are basically leaving on the table just because i have a little bit of knowledge in real estate i guess i'm downplaying myself a little bit. I've done real estate for over 10 years now and I've helped people do this exact thing for over 10 years now. And now the musician's back, so I'm probably gonna have to leave this spot, which sucks because I'm wet. Soaked. Yep. All right, so here's how that works. Basically, every single time I buy a property, I refuse to buy it unless I can get it for at least $125,000 under market value. That way, when I fix it up, I get at least a boost to my net worth of like 
a hundred to sometimes a hundred twenty thousand dollars or more for example I just opened escrow on a deal for four hundred fifty thousand dollars that I expect to be worth over six hundred twenty five thousand dollars after I spend maybe thirty five thousand dollars on the deal that extra money because I didn't touch it is now not taxed boosts my net worth and insulates me from movements in the marketplace. Over 12 deals, that's over $1.2 million of bonus and net worth doing nothing, just applying a little bit of knowledge. Am I in your way? Now, lately I've been lucky. Last year I did that three times, which is basically an additional income of untaxed $300,000 per year, which is just insane. And so this is where all of a sudden you start looking, you go, wait a minute, Kevin, are you serious? $92,000 a year in principal pay down, $40,000 a year in extra tax benefits, $300,000 a year in extra income because of getting wedge deals basically. And that's not even taxed. Why is it not taxed? Because it's value in property which if I want to sell that property, I could 1031 exchange it and just ask the government for a favor to not pay taxes for a while. And then you might be thinking, oh, well, they'll get you at some point. No, there are ways around the some point as well. You could pretty much never pay taxes on this money. So all of a sudden it's like, wait a minute, that's like, that's like $430,000 a year of passive wealth doing very, very little or next to nothing. Like I, you know, I never consider investing in real estate active work. Now, what I'm describing to you, like principal pay down, tax benefits, the wedge effect, those things are passive. But yeah, there is some work involved in actually like scrolling through Redfin every day to kind of see if there are new deals that come up. But I mean, come on, if I consider like two hours a week work for the amount of pay that you get in real estate, like, okay, <laughs> then, then my perspective is a little skewed. The fourth thing that's really cool about owning real estate is you're owning an asset, which assets tend to go up in value over time. Of course, there are fluctuations, right? Markets go up, markets go down, so there's always that fluctuation. But if you look at real estate in the long term, it tends to work out pretty dang well. In fact, if you look back at like the last 40 years, you see about 3% annual appreciation in real estate, which is awesome. But let's just assume these properties just went up in value by about 1%. That would generate for me an extra $80,000 of untaxed wealth every single year. I could be sitting here on the Disney cruise and all of a sudden with 1% appreciation plus the 430K we already talked about, we're talking about $510,000 of annual wealth. We haven't even talked about cash flow. This is exactly why the rich get richer is because you look at the perspective beyond what's obvious. When you start looking at the income beyond what's obvious, it's like, oh my gosh, how could I not do this over and over and over again? And then obviously that's where you can get ridiculous. See, the way you can get ridiculous with this is you go, well, what if the uh, you know appreciation rate's 2%? Well, that's 160K extra. What if it's 3%? Cool, well, that's about 240,000 extra. It's absolutely insane. Now, I know a lot of people look and they say, well, come on, Kevin, real estate appreciation is speculative. You can't guarantee real estate appreciation. And that's true, but you have to ask yourself, if you're buying in an area where the population is going up and you believe in the United States economy, then there's no reason not to use real estate as an investment tool. In fact, it's even a hedge against inflation, which then you get people that say things like, well, why bother investing in real estate if you're only getting like two or 3% above inflation? Well, it's not quite true. When I, with 1% appreciation, create over $500,000 of annual net worth, like I did in 2019, picking up three wedge deals with principal pay down, with tax benefits, all of a sudden you look and you go, whoa, that's a really good return on your money. In fact, if we remove the whole wedge deal aspect and we only consider tax benefits, principal pay down, and 1% appreciation above the market, I could take all of the net worth I have in these deals and put it into stocks and I would have to earn 7% to equal the returns I make here. If appreciation was 2% above inflation, I would have to earn over 9.8% in the stock market to match what I could make in real estate only considering principal pay down, appreciation and tax benefit, which is insane because it's like, wait a minute. That's easy, that's the bare minimum. We're not even talking cash flow. If I get 5% cash on cash on top of that from cash flow, that's even crazier. Like how could you not be involved in real estate? 
And I think that's why I'm so gung-ho about real estate in general. Let's ask yourself, what should you do if today you had no assets and no money? How should you get started? Let's do that. Away from the music. We'll go in here. All right, here we go. Here's the exact thing you should start with. The very first thing you should do is you should begin to control an asset. Now, this means replacing your landlord. Go buy a place. I oftentimes ask this hypothetical question. What would your net worth be if you owned zero real estate and had zero debt and zero other assets? Your net worth would be zero. What about if I gave you $20 million worth of real estate, but I also gave you $20 million worth of debt? Your net worth would also be zero, right? Except what is going to happen on the first of next month? All your tenants are going to pay, so you'll get paid cash flow, but not even considering the cash flow, what's gonna happen? Tax benefits, principal pay down, prorated appreciation. Whoa, all of a sudden, if you just had control of $20 million worth of real estate, you're pretty much guaranteed to make money the very next month. Like if somebody came to me tomorrow and said, here, Kevin, you can have this $20 million apartment building with $20 million worth of debt. I'm literally giving you zero dollars but I have the deed. I could raise the rents. I know I'm gonna have principal pay down. I know I'm going to have a lot of tax benefits. And as long as it's not in an area with a declining population, I know there's going to be appreciation. It's like, pfft, easy way to make money. But I think what stops a lot of people from getting started is this fear of, well, I don't just wanna make money. I wanna make sure I invest my money where I can make the most money. And that's where I challenge you. Where can you take three and a half thousand dollars and control one hundred thousand dollars of an asset aka three and a half percent down on a hundred thousand dollar deal or like ten thousand five hundred dollars down on a three hundred thousand dollar deal where else can you do that but real estate it's not possible anywhere else and then where else can you have somebody else pay the mortgage for you like a tenant I'm sorry, I got inspired to make this video because the only reason I am on a Disney cruise with a concierge lounge over here, which basically means you have a one bedroom suite, which on a cruise I guess is like really special because cruise rooms are usually really small. Why can I do this? Because I've invested in real estate and I'm really passionate about it. Let's get inside and see the family. Hello. Hey. Excuse oh. me, missus, do you like real estate? Yes, I love real estate. Why? I like to make money. Oh, hi, Max. Yeah, Jack? You're in the bathroom? That's cool. He's going to poop. He didn't poop. Hmm. Hey, Laura, question for you. And have I prepped you on any of these? No. All right. What do you say to people who say, don't buy a house? I think that they are uneducated. What about people who want to get into rental property. What do you think the best way is to get started getting into rental property? Uh, I think that they should live in the house first and then move and then use that first house as the rental. And I highly encourage everybody to hire a property manager unless they know their stuff, which if you take the property management course, you would know how to be your own property manager and do the necessary things to have the easiest time doing the property management. <laughs>